Hello there everybody, Martin here from Affinity 4 Commander. Today we have another great gameplay video for you to enjoy, so without further ado, let's take a look at those opening hands. I am playing my General Ferris Rockerick Multicolored Matters deck, and keep an opening hand containing Lightning Helix, Swift Foot Boots, Blade Splicer, Aurelia Exemplar of Justice, Gisela Blade of Gold Knight, a Plains, and a Mountain. Thomas is playing his Amorous the Lustrous card types matter deck, and keeps an opening hand of Regrowth, Seeker of Skybreak, Skyward Eye Prophets, Evolving Wilds, Selesnia Sanctuary, Tree of Tales, and Urza's Tower. Fail is playing his Aeve, Progenitor Ooze Storm deck, keeping a start in hand of three visits, Balaged Recovery, Overwhelming Stampede, The Great Henge, and Three Forests. And finally, Tom is playing his Kahira the Orphan Guard Cat Tribal deck, keeping a starting hand consisting of Ajani's Pride Mate, Leonin Skyhunter, King of the Pride, Make a Stand, Overrun, Blossoming Sands, and a Plains. I start things off by playing a mountain and pass to Phil. Phil plays a forest and passes. Tom plays Blossoming Sands, gaining a life, and ends his turn. Thomas plays Evolving Wilds and immediately sacrifices it. He searches his library for an island, puts the land into play tapped, and passes to Martin. I play a Plains and cast Boros Signet before passing. Phil plays a second forest and casts three visits. He puts a third forest onto the battlefield from his library and ends his turn. Tom plays a Plains and casts Leonin Skyhunter. Out of mana, he passes to Thomas. Thomas plays Urza's Tower and passes the turn. I start my turn by casting my commander, General Ferris Rockerick, and when Thomas doesn't counter him, play Boros Garrison. Flavor win. I return my mountain to my hand with the garrison's ETB and end my turn. Phil plays a forest and casts Emerald Medallion. Not yet finished, he casts Eternal Witness, returning the three visits in his graveyard to his hand. With nothing more to do, Phil passes to Tom. Tom plays a forest and casts his commander, Kahira the Orphan Guard. Moving to combat, he attacks Phil with his now vigilant Skyhunter, dealing him 2 damage and passes. Thomas plays Tree of Tales and then casts Seeker of Skybreak. With one mana open, he ends his turn. In my turn, I play a mountain and cast Aurelia Exemplar of Justice. This triggers my commander's ability, creating me a 4-4 red and white golem token, and I pass to Phil. Phil starts his turn by playing a forest, and casts three visits for a second time. He searches his library for a forest, puts it onto the battlefield, and then casts Balaged Recovery. Phil returns the three visits in his graveyard to his hand, and immediately casts it, putting yet another forest into play from his library in what can only be described as the most literal use of three visits I have ever seen. Good job, Phil. Pleased with his achievement, Phil passes the turn. Tom casts King of the Pride, further buffing his little kitties, and then moves to combat. Here he attacks me with Leonin Skyhunter, dealing me five damage, and ends his turn. Thomas begins his turn by casting Kiora's Follower and then plays Celestia Sanctuary. He returns his Tree of Tales to his hand and passes to Martin. I play a Plains and noticing that Thomas now has access to 8 mana, cast Lightning Helix. I create a second Golem, deal lethal damage to Kiora's follower and gain 3 life in this way, which I'm sure you'll agree isn't too shabby for 2 mana. Value. Not yet finished, I cast Blade Splicer, who doesn't trigger General Rockrick's ability, but does create a 3 3 Golem himself, which is almost as good. Moving to combat, I use Aurelia's ability to give my original Golem plus 2 plus 0 Trample and Vigilance, and then attack Phil with the Pumped Up Automaton. Phil declares no blocks, taking 6 damage, and I pass the turn. Phil plays, surprise, surprise, another forest, and then casts the Great Henge. Next, he casts a very thematic Soul Ring, and gains 2 life by tapping the Henge to help cast his commander, Ave Progenitor Ooze. Phil creates two non-legendary token copies of the Ooze, 
puts a plus one plus one counter on one of them and two plus one plus one counters on the original. He then puts a third plus one plus one counter on Abe thanks to the Great Henge, draws a card and ends his turn. Tom starts his turn by playing Reliquary Tower and casts Fire Mind Vessel. Moving to combat, he attacks Phil with his flyer, dealing him 5 damage, and passes to Thomas. Thomas replays Tree of Tails and casts Regrowth, targeting Cura's follower. He puts the Merfolk into his hand, casts them, and passes. In my turn, I play a Mountain and then cast Blade Historian. This creates me another golem, and I cast Swiftfoot Boots, swiftly attaching them to my Historian. I in fact see what you did there. Moving to combat, I target Blade Historian with Aurelia's ability, and attack Tom with the aforementioned Cleric and two 4-4 golems. I also attack Thomas with General Rockerick, and neither player declares any blocks. Tom takes a whopping 24 damage, Thomas takes 6, and rather pleased with my position in the game, I end my turn. Phil begins his turn by moving straight to combat, attacking Tom with Eternal Witness and telling him that he needs the creature to die in order to help weaken Martin's board state. Rude. Tom agrees to this proposal, blocking and killing the Shaman with his Sky Hunter, and Phil moves to his post-combat main phase. Here he casts Master Vandal, exiling the Witness from his graveyard in order to exile Martin's Lightning Greaves. Phil then puts a plus one plus one counter on his shapeshifter and draws a card from his henge. Not quite finished, he plays a forest as his land for turn and passes to Tom. Tom casts a Johnny's Pride Mate and then moves to combat. He he attacks me with the MVP of the game, the Onin Sky Hunter, and I declare no blockers, taking five damage. With four mana open, Tom passes the turn. Thomas plays a planes and casts Primal Command. He chooses to put Boros Garrison on top of Martin's library and searches his library for Angel of the Dire Hour. Thomas puts the creature into his hand and uses his remaining mana to cast Yashan in Placeable Earth. He once again searches his library, this time finding a forest and a plains, and puts both lands into his hand before ending his turn. I draw the Boros Garrison on the top of my library and move straight to combat. Here I swear revenge on Thomas for messing up my mana base and making me draw land, and target Aurelia with her own ability. I attack Thomas with my self-buffing angel, 3 4, four golems and a 3-3 three, three golem, the latter of which I put a plus one plus one counter on with Aurelia's mentor ability. Thomas blocks one of the golems with Yashan, but sadly this isn't enough to stop him from taking lethal damage, knocking him out of the game. Sweet Urza Martin, calm down. Never! In my second main phase, I replay Boros Garrison, returning a mountain to my hand and pass to Phil. Phil responds to this by tapping the Great Henge, gaining 2 life, and then proceeds to his turn. Phil plays his 10th forest, spends a couple of minutes thinking, and passes. How ominous. Tom plays Command Tower and casts Oblivion Ring, targeting Blade Historian. The Cleric is exiled, and Tom once again attacks me with the Onin Sky Hunter. This time I decide to block with Aurelia, with the angel succumbing to the mighty kitty, and Tom ends his turn. Martin starts his turn by playing a mountain, and casts Gisela, Blade of Gold Knight. Not a bad replacement for Blade Historian if I do say so myself. He creates a 4-4 golem, and moving to combat, attacks Phil with 4 golems. Phil responds to this by tapping his henge, gaining 2 life, and blocks two of the attacking stone men with his commander and masked vandal. He then takes 16 damage due to Gazella's damage doubling effect from the unblocked creatures, and Martin passes the turn to him. Phil plays a forest and taps the Great Henge, gaining two life. Next he casts his commander, who enters with three plus one plus one counters thanks to the combined effects of its own ability and the Henge, and draws a card. Not finding an answer to my board, Phil passes. Tom begins his turn by playing Unclaimed Territory, naming Cat, and then casts Overrun. Moving to combat, he attacks Martin with all of his creatures, and before blocks are declared, casts Make a Stand. This further buffs his army of kittens, 
and Martin blocks the Leonin Skyhunter with Gisela. Martin takes 12 damage from unblocked creatures and the Skyhunter's Trample, and no creatures are destroyed given that Tom assigned what would be lethal damage to Gisela before her damage halving ability took effect. Happy with the dent he's made in Martin's life total, Tom ends the turn. I play Battlefield Forge as my land for turn and then move to combat. Here I attack Phil with Gisela and Tom with General Rockrig and four golems. Phil is unable to block the flyer and Tom puts a creature in front of each of my attackers. Before damage I cast Make Your Mark targeting my commander and create a golem with his ability. Damage then occurs with Phil taking 10 and all of Tom's creatures being dealt lethal damage. My commander is also destroyed in this skirmish, and Make Your Mark creates me a 3-2 spirit when he dies. A 4-4 and a 3-2 for one mana. Bargain. In my post-combat main phase, I recast General Ferris Rockerick and pass to Phil. Phil plays yet another forest, gains two life from the Great Henge, and casts Bio Waste Blob. I love how the only thing keeping it from instantly dying is its own anthem effect. Phil draws thanks to his henge and casts Obelisk of Erd, naming Ooze. Not yet finished, he casts Overwhelming Stampede, giving all of his creatures plus 8, plus 8, and trample. Moving to combat, Phil attacks Martin with Ave and their two copies. Martin blocks the original Ooze with his spirit and a golem, the larger of the two token Ooze with a golem, and the final Ooze with his commander. Similarly to Tom, Phil assigns amounts that would be lethal damage to each of Martin's creatures before Gisela halves the damage they receive, resulting in Martin taking 16 damage and no creatures being destroyed. With Martin's life total looking dangerously low, Phil passes the turn. Tom casts Kosali Slingers, destroying one of my untapped golems with the creature's ETB. Next he casts Naturalize, destroying yet another golem, and ends his turn. Martin draws, plays a planes, and moves to combat. Here he attacks Tom with four creatures and Phil with three creatures, knocking both players out of the game with one powerful swing. And that is it for another game. I hope that you enjoyed seeing my Boris Commander kick some butt. We'd like to give a huge thank you to each and every one of our Patreon supporters without whom we wouldn't be able to continue making content such as this. Also, be sure to check out our affiliate links in the video description. It won't cost you anything extra, but it really helps us out if you buy our products through them. And finally, if you want to help out the channel, you can do so in one of four easy ways. Liking this video, subscribing, hitting that bell icon, and leaving us a comment, I read every one. That's it for now though, we'll see you next time. Stay awesome!